This is the story uh, Jim Thorpe's Bright Path. It's on 664. It's a biography. A biography is a book about a real person's life as told by someone else. As you read, think about uh, why the author chose to write about this athlete. So we'll start out on page, follow along on 666. Um, they say, uh, let's see here. Okay, something like that. They say Jim Thorpe's story began in May of 1887 in a small log cabin on North Canadian River, there in the Indian Territory uh, that became the state of Oklahoma. Charlotte and, and Charlotte View Thorpe, a Patanomi woman, gave birth to twin boys. Her husband Hiram, a mixed blood Indian of the Sac and Fox Nation, stood close by on that spring day. Day. Uh, the sun was in Hiram uh, Thorpe's heart as he looked down at the sons he named Charles and James. Jim's mother gave him another name, Wa Tu Thu Huck, uh, she said, thinking how the light shone on the road to their cabin. Bright path. As good as that name was, neither of them knew just how far that path would lead their son. Like most twins, Jim and Charlie were close, even though they were not exactly the same. Charlie had darker skin and brown hair, while Jim's skin was light and his hair uh, dark black. When they raced or wrestled, Jim was always a little ahead of Charlie, his best friend. Whenever Jim got too far ahead, he would stop and wait. Um, uh, Come on, Charlie, he would say with a grin. Then when his brother caught up, they would be off again. Summer or winter, Jim and Charlie's favorite place was outdoors. They roamed prairies, swam and played together. By the time they were three, Pa Thorpe had, had taught his boys to ride a horse. He showed them how to shoot a bow, set a trap, and hunt. Jim took it all uh, like catfish, like a t catfish takes to a creek. Although small, he was quick and tough. He was so fast and had so much endurance that he could run down a rabbit on foot. When it came to the old ways, those skills that made men of the sack and fox great providers for their families, Jim was a great learner. By the time the tw uh, twins were six, Pa Thorpe said Jim knew more about the woods than many men. I'm just going to move quickly so the light goes on. We're on the so we're on the top of 668 right now. The top of 668. Okay, so 668. It says their sixth year also brought a big change for Jim and Charlie. The Indian agency that oversaw the reservation said when SAC and, children, uh, SAC and Fox children reached the age of six, they had to go to the agency boarding school. Indian boarding schools did not provide the same education offered to white, whites. In addition, the boarding schools were designed to cut them off from everything that made them Indians, their language, their traditions, even their families. Uh, Jim's father uh, had become one of the Sac and Fox men who could read and write English. He'd seen uneducated Indians cheated out of everything by dishonest uh, men who tricked Indians into signing papers they could, could not read. My sons, he said uh, to Jim and Charlie, you need white man's knowledge to survive. It was no surprise that Jim hated school. He had to wear awful clothes, a heavy wool suit, and a cap, uh, a felt cap tight shoes, a shirt, and, and necktie that strangle him. He also got smacked hard across his knuckles with a wooden ruler whenever he spoke a word of sack. He missed Ma's cooking and Pa's stories about their clan ancestor, Chief Blackhawk, uh, the famous warrior who had fought the whites to defend his people. Worst of all, school, uh, school kept Jim inside all day and locked him up all night in a cold dormitory away from the forest and prairies and made him feel like a fox caught in an iron trap. Jim didn't care uh, what school might uh, do, uh, do for him or his people. He just wanted to get away from it. Charlie was betty, better at studies than Jim. He didn't seem to mind at the military discipline or being stuck at, at a desk. Solving an arithmetic problem was a challenge to Charlie the way winning a race was to Jim. Now it was Charlie who was waiting for his brother to catch up. So we're now on 670, 670, okay? Uh, so, uh, come on, Jim, Charlie said. Don't give up. 
you can do it. So Jim tried to master basic arithmetic, reading, and writing. Then his third year of school, something happened that broke his heart. Sickness also often struck the crowded, unheated dormitories of the Indian boarding schools. Sanitation was poor, and there were, were no real doctors to tend to the sick. Epidemics of influenza, influenza swept through like prairie fire, fires. Even common childhood diseases such as measles and whooping cough could be fatal to the Indian children jammed together in those schools. Charlie was one of those who became sick. He caught pneumonia and died. Jim felt as the sunlight had gone out from Jim's life. His twin brother had been his best friend. Uh, Jim's mother tried to comfort her son, but he was inconsolable. Inconsol he would never hear Charlie's encouraging voice again. The thought of going back to school without his brother tore at Jim's heart. Let me work around the farm, uh, Jim beg uh, pa, Jim begged. Uh, his father, though, was sure he knew what was best. Um, son, he said, you've got to get an education. Charlie would have wanted you to keep learning. Jim listened to his father, but when he returned to school and saw the empty cot where Charlie slept, it was too much for him. As soon as the teacher's back was turned, Jim ran 23 miles back home, straight as an arrow. Pa Thorpe had no choice but to send his stubborn son even further away. So young, uh, Jim, at age 11, was sent to Haskell Institute in Lawrence, Kansas, almost 300 miles away. Haskell was stricter than the agency boarding school. There were children from more than 80 tribes uh, were dressed in military uniforms and were awakened before dawn with a bugle call. Manual training was mixed with classroom studies to teach them trades useful to white society. Hard work was, uh, was the rule. The students of Haskell did it all, growing corn, making bread, building wagons, and sewing their own uniforms. Jim did better at Haskell. Uh, uh, he worked in the engineering shop. Learning how things were made was more interesting than being cooped up in a classroom. Plus, Haskell had something the agency boarding school didn't have, football. For the first time in his life, Jim saw, uh, saw a football game. The cheers of the crowd and the athleticism of the players awakened something deep inside Jim. The same emotions that had been stirred by Pa's story, stories of Black Hawk and the other warriors who had fought their, uh, for their peoples. Jim knew right away that football was something he wanted to play. So we're now on page uh, 672. 672. Um, but Jim was too small uh, for the sport. He was less than five feet tall and weighed uh, just 100 pounds. He joined the uh, track team in instead and became one of the fastest runners. Meanwhile, he watched every football game he could. Jim also met Chauncey Ar Araquet, Haskell's best football player, who taught him about the game. Cha Chauncey even helped Jim make a little football out of a scrap leather stuffed with rags. With, uh, with that football, Jim organized games with the other boys too small for the school team. Near the end of his second year at Haskell, Jim got word his father had been shot in a hunting accident and was dying. Jim's only thought was that he had to get home. He ran, ran off and headed south. It took him two, re two weeks to reach their farm. To his surprise, Pa was there, recovered, uh, recovered from his uh, wound and waiting. We knew you'd be coming home, his father said, embracing him. On 673, Jim never went back to Haskell. Shortly before he returned home, his mother died of a sudden illness. Jim grieved over the loss of his mother, and Pa Thorpe finally agreed that his son did not have to go back to boarding school. Jim's father believed his son still needed an education, so Jim began attending school at nearby Gar Garden Grove. At Garden Grove, students were learning about a new thing called electricity. Electricity could make it seem as if the sun were still shining even at night. The thought of that appealed to Jim. Electrical sunlight could be brought to the Indian homes too. Pa Thorpe had always uh, told Jim that an education would give him the ability to help his people. Maybe becoming an electrician was the bright path he was supposed to follow. So I'm going to pause because I want to um, have it. Uh, this is going to be two parts so I can get it all on YouTube. 